Okay, we can continue uh, with Professor Lucas uh, lecture and uh, he will start from where he stopped like before the break. Over to you, Luke. Hi. So what we can uh, do now is a way of uh, generalizing a little bit what we have done. Uh, consider a number of uh, hypothetical devices in, which are able to uh, <clears throat> say, interchange information for uh, for work and vice versa. So the idea is as in some sense that having a tape like this one, a tape with a very low entropy can be fed to some sort of, of device which is in, con in contact with a thermal reservoir and provide some work. And at the end of the, at the end of the manipulation, what you end up is um, a tape in which you see there is some randomness. So you are reshuffled. Uh, there is a sequence, a random sequence of zeros and ones. So the entropy of the tape has increased, and uh, the uh, uh, by this uh, by this mean you can say more or less try and keep the <clears throat> entropy of the universe constant, and nevertheless extract a certain amount of work at the price of degrading the information contained in the tape in the in the tape you're feeding in. So one of the uh, prototypes of this kind of uh, of this kind of devices is due to Mandel and Yashinsky about 15 years ago. So the idea is that you have a tape. So you see the tape is uh, running from uh, right to left. It enters with all well with a prevalence of ones in each case. And then at each time step, well, at each given instant, there is a one case of the tape that is in contact with the, with the system. The system can be in three states, A, B, and C, like that, connecting. And uh, A and B and B and C have, uh, say, you can, the system can jump from A to B and B and C with, um, with uh, some rates of the satisfied tail balance. In this case, we consider that the, en the energy of state B is equal to zero. The energy of state A is minus epsilon divided by two, where epsilon is a positive quantity. And the state of, uh, of C is a plus epsilon divided by two. And the, uh, the system is attached to uh, to a weight in such a way that epsilon is equal to the work that is needed to uh, raise the weight by uh, an amount equal to delta H. So from A to B and B to A, C to B, uh, B to C and C to B, they uh, the rates are satisfied detail balance, so they're given by. So the, this ratio is equal to the exponential minus epsilon divided by 2 kT. But the transition from A to C or vice versa can only, uh, uh, can only uh, happen if the, so A going to C can only happen if the tape bit is one. And in order to keep a reversibility, when A goes to C, the bit is flipped to zero and the mass is lowered by delta H. So if you go from here to there, you, you flip the spin and the mass is, is um, lower by delta H. In this way, the, again, the, <clears throat> you see that the energy, the, the energy for the transition is provided by the lowering of the mass. The reverse transition only occurs if the tape bit is equal to zero. And in this case, the, because you go from a high energy state C to a low energy state A, you are able to raise the uh, the weight by the same amount of delta H. Um, I think they say that the fraction of zeros, not a one, so the incoming A tape is equal to R. And the, inter the idea is that uh, these interactions happen at the random times with frequency gamma. I say that uh, with frequency gamma, uh, on waiting a time of the order of one over gamma, on average, you just uh, put in contact of the tape with the device. And then if the, if the state is in A and the, uh, uh, 
the tape reads one, then this transition happens and one is set to zero and vice versa. So only with the frequency one. With this, in this way, we are able to solve the problem. Just in the case, so consider that at, if there is no interaction with the tape, the system reaches an equilibrium distribution in which uh, the probability, say, probability of staying in a state uh, A is equal, say, to one over Z, where Z is a normalizing factor. The probability of staying in uh, state B is given by one over Z2 times exponential to minus epsilon over 2kt. And the probability of staying in state C is equal to one over Z exponential minus epsilon over kt. And now assume that the frequency by which the interactions between the device and the tape are is very small. This doesn't will not change that much the probability distribution. So we can uh, we can evaluate what happens by saying that the probability distribution of the system is essentially equal to the equilibrium probability distribution. And therefore, we are able to evaluate what is the net current from C to A. So there will be a net current from C to A because as far as the system is concerned, it is out of equilibrium um, by a very small amount. In fact, a proportion to gamma. Now, so how, how often you go from C to A? Well, first of all, you have to interact with the tape. Otherwise, there is no possibility. So it's proportional to gamma. Then it is proportional to the fraction of zeros in the, in the tape. So it, it's gamma times one minus R, where R is the uh, fraction of uh, cases of the tape in which there is one. And of course, it is uh, multiplied by the probability of being in state C, so it, which is P equilibrium of C, which is this uh, given by this expression. Oh, sorry. No, you don't see it, probably, which is given by this expression. You, of course, you have to subtract the um, probability of the reverse transition and the reverse jump. And this is given by gamma times R, probabilities of ones, times the probability of being in state A. So you sum, summing this up, you find that, that this current is given, is obviously proportional to gamma. And then there is this, this normalization factor that common to all the probabilities. And you have a one minus R times this um, Boltzmann factor. That is the proportional to the probability of being in state C minus R. That Now, to analyze the behavior of the machine, what you have to do is, well, it's better to introduce this quantity D, which is equal to one minus two R. So, and so this is a quantity that goes between uh, minus one and one. And then another um, quantity is zeta, that is equal to the tan hyperbolic tangent of epsilon, that is our scale of energy, it's the difference in the energy between state C and say A divided by 2kT. And then by, you can uh, say, plug it in, express uh, the exponential in terms of this hyperbolic tangent. And you find, you find that, that the uh, net current from C to A is larger if this D, that is the imbalance of the tape with respect to the K, we, to the total random case in which the fraction of ones and zeros are the same. So it is larger than this zeta. And so this zeta depends on the temperature. Of course, the lower the temperature, this, uh, this, um, okay, the, the tangent uh, approaches one. And then you have another another condition that for uh, if you have uh, d less than minus zeta minus this tan hyperbolic tangent, then uh, the stationary probability of a becomes larger than so the, the probability that you have after the interaction becomes larger than r. 
And if you put these together, you find that there are three regimes. In one regime, when D is larger than this zeta, the weight is lifted. So let's go, let's go back here. When T becomes large, the tangent goes to zero. So this condition is very easy to satisfy. When T is small, then the, the hyperbolic tangent becomes, becomes of the order one. And essentially there, is, there will be a very little ways of uh, satisfying this condition. This is due to the fact that you are controlling the probability of starting anyway from C. You can, you can only gain work if you start from C. So if D is larger than this zeta, the weight on the average is lifted and the, it, the entropy of the tape increases. So what you have is that the, uh, so the current from C to A is positive and the entropy of the tape is larger than the, sorry, the entropy of the system is larger than the entropy of the tape. Uh, the, um, as, and now the point is that the um, entropy, if, we, if you measure the entropy of the outgoing tape, the entropy of the outgoing tape is given by essentially the entropy, the entropy of the probability that you are in uh, uh, between state A and state C. So you have the, the thing is that in a steady state, so you are just comparing, in this case, you, you are comparing the probability in the equilibrium state, whatever, of being in state A in state C with the probability distribution of the tape. And you find that, you find that in this engine regime, in fact, what you are doing, the net thing is that you are raising the, raising the weight at the price of increasing the entropy of the tape. There is a regime between in which minus a zeta is less than d and larger than zeta. In this case, on average, the weight is lower, but what you get is that the probability of the tape, outgoing tape, is smaller than the, than the, sorry, the entropy of the outgoing tape is smaller than the entropy of the incoming tape. That means in some sense that you are erasing the information that is on the tape. No, you you uh, you introduce a tape which may contain uh, your favorite song, and what you end up having a tape, a blank tape. The third possibility is that d is less than minus zeta. In this case, the weight goes down, but you are adding noise to your song. So in this case, the system is a dud because it spends work to uh, mess up with your. Uh, with your tape. More generally, we consider a machine that is done in this way. You have a, a two-state system. A system can be in two states that we call down and up. And of course, this, the state of down has a lower energy than up. And we say, well, OK, energy of down is equal to 0. Energy of up is larger than 0 is equal to epsilon. And then we have a jump rate for going up or down, and they satisfy the tail balance. So, okay, the rate of going up divided by the rate of going down is equal, is equal to e to the minus epsilon divided by kt. The equilibrium state is the usual equilibrium state of, uh, say, by, given by a Boltzmann factor. And again, the interaction with the information reservoir happens at random times with average frequency gamma. And therefore, you, there is a possibility of performing the jump. Now, when the interaction happens, the idea is that you can go from, uh, say, from the lower state to the upper state provided that the state of the tape, the, uh, the state of the tape is equal to one, and you can go down only provided that the state of the tape is equal to zero. So if the jump occurs, you ex if, say for instance, if you go from up to down, the work is extracted. And if you go from down to up, the work is released. 
And of course, the jump does not occur if you have the wrong bit on the tape. And, and the idea is that whenever, so what you, what in a sense, what you do is that when the tape, when you uh, interact with the tape, with average of frequency gamma, you look at the, uh, you look at the bit. So if the bit is, uh, if the bit is one and you are in a state zero, you exchange the two states and therefore you have to pay a certain amount of energy that is an amount of energy equal to epsilon. If the uh, bit is equal to zero and you are in the upper state, then you, again, you exchange the two states and you really, you glean an amount of energy equal to epsilon and you go and you go down. So you can, and the idea is that whatever, if you switch the two states anyway, at the end of the day, what you have is that the lower state is called D and uh, now, so you have that this is for the state, this is for the rate information mediated jumps. And, but then of course, uh, there is a possibility that the jumps do not occur. And they and, and this possibility happens with the complementary probability of the jump. So we have uh, that you remain state down with gamma times one minus R, we rate gamma minus R, and you remain in state up with the probability with the rate gamma times R. It's easy to get the steady state distribution for the state up and state down in this way. And so you have that the probability of being, of being in state uh, in state up is given by the ratio of the jump rate of going up by either thermally or by in, in interacting with the tape divided by the normalization factor and the probability of going down is of course given by the sum of the rate of going thermally or going via interaction with the tape. And the normalization factor is given by the sum of the two thermal rates plus the sum of the two information mediated jump rates and you see that this is equal to, so the first one is defined gamma, it is fine K and the other one is equal to gamma. Now, why are we using this, uh, introducing this model? It is that this allows us to weigh, to see that the same system can be interpreted in different ways. And the first way is a measurement of feedback. So instead of having a tape, we have a measuring device. And this measuring device, say, attempts to measure the state the system is in. And in this case, R is the error probability. That is the probability that if the system is in state U, so the given you evaluate what is the conditional probability that the system is in state U if the measuring device gives you one. And so the, and, and the other uh, possibility is that what is the probability that the system is in uh, state D if the, uh, the measuring device gives you z the answer zero. And this is equal to one minus R. So it's close to one. Uh, we hope it's close to one. And of course, so you have a complementary probability of making a mistake. And then we say, okay, if the device gives us one, so as far as we know, the system is in the upper state, therefore we can let it switch down and get, and get some work epsilon. Now let's ask what is the probability that the system is in, in a state up after interaction in general? Well, one of the possibilities is that we simply say, um, so it's given by the probability of in the in the steady state of being a state up times, I think that here I made a mistake. There is, a, I, we have to exchange this R. And so then, 
So the, the way, the probability of staying in state up after interaction is either the measurement has given zero, so there was a wrong measurement, and um, so we didn't, we didn't move, or the measurement um, gave, gave a one, uh, how to say, the measurement gave, um, gave erroneously one while the system was in state D. So if the system gave erroneously one in state D, what happens we rate D and then we switch the two states and we end up in state one. And then, uh, okay, uh, this is, um, so the, <clears throat> using this uh, information, what we get is that uh, the average work, the average power performed on the system, again, is proportional to gamma because there is uh, the scale of energy epsilon. And then we have the probability of, say, measuring, uh, measuring d, uh, measuring d, having state one, and then uh, and then switching erroneously. So this is uh, something that we pay. It's uh, average power that is performed on the system, or the possibility that we rightly measured that the system was in state up, with the probability one minus r, and this and gleaning the amount of energy epsilon. And then you put this uh, together and you find that, that this is equal to minus gamma epsilon times the probability in the steady state of being a state up minus R. And this is equal to the average amount of um, heat that is released to the reservoir. Because on the average, what you have is that the system energy does not change. So all the work you perform on the system eventually ends up in the reservoir. <laughs> now let's look at the mutual information between the state of the system and the measuring device. What you have is that the mutual information, one of the expression that you have is given by the <clears throat> entropy, the Shannon's entropy of the device. So the probability, the Shannon entropy of the marginal distribution of the device minus the average Shannon entropy of the conditional distribution of the state of the system, of the device given the state of the system. And now this quantity here, so the, this uh, average value of the marginal distribution, of the entropy of the marginal distribution is, is simply given by the Shannon entropy of the uh, measuring probability, that, that is quite easy to see. So in this case, so we have this relation. On the other hand, we have, uh, so by putting this in inside of this relation here, what we find is that because the uh, this quantity the, uh, is related to the, on the, let's put it this way, the average, um, the average entropy production of the uh, thermal entropy production must be equal to the average entropy production increase of the reservoir because the system is in a steady state. So it doesn't change on the average its entropy. What you have is that the average power of the system plus gamma kT mutual information that comes from here, you see, there is this relation between this and this is equal, is, must be larger than zero. So you have a connection between the power you perform on the system or if you want the power that you want to glean out of the system and the mutual information between measurement and uh, between the system and the measurement device. And of course, if the mutual information is positive, that is if your if you're measuring measurement does not make too many errors, let's put it this way, 
then you are able to have a W negative and therefore you, have, you are able to extract some, uh, some energy from some work out of the reservoir. The other, in, in, so this is a first interpretation in which we say that the interaction happens because we perform a measurement of the system and then we, uh, we perform a protocol, for instance, switching the two states in order to get the, uh, in order to get the energy if we can. The other possibility is the one that we started with, that is a tape. We have a tape which is prepared in some state and the tape is in contact with the system with the frequency gamma. Then if the tape reads to one and the state is equal to up, um, so if the state reads one, we put the state in the uh, we put the system in the state up. Otherwise, if we put the if the state tape reads zero, we put the system in state D. Now this may be a switch or not a switch, depending on whether say um, depending on what the system in what system state the system is in. So if the system state switches then the read is also switched. So in, the, in this way, only the jumps of zero to D and one to U are allowed. That, so in, in a way to balance the, the entropy of between D, between, so in order to make a reversible, a reversible mapping of the state before interaction and the state after interaction. Say that the probability in the outgoing tape is equal to the steady state. As, so uh, since it, whatever happens is that uh, if the uh, after the interaction, if the state is if the um, tape reads one, the system must be in the state U, the state upper energy. So this quantity. So this is the probability that in the outgoing tape we read one. And again, by the same reasoning as above, we have that the po power that is applied to the system given by minus gamma epsilon times the probability on the outgoing tape to be in state one minus uh, R, that is the error probability. And the total production rate, now total entropy production rate on the tape you know, a total entropy production rate in this tape setup is equal to the work done on work done on the system, of course, plus the change in entropy of the tape that is given by this difference. That is the difference of the entropy in the outgoing tape minus the entropy of the ingoing tape. Now, the fact is that the entropy of the outgoing tape um, can be smaller than the entropy of the ingoing tape. For instance, if you are, have a random or uh, say a seemingly random sequence of zeros and ones, and you, have, and you end up with a sequence which has many more zeros and ones. So in this case, the system can work as an eraser, as we have seen before in the mandal uh, yashinsky machine. And now we have the third interpretation is a generalized detailed balance. Now a generalized detailed balance, what we say, well, we don't know whether it is a tape or not a tape, etc. The only thing I know is that this, is, this system is making jumps from one state to another. And then uh, what is the uh, resulting entropy production? Now in this case, the, we, there is a, a formula that was introduced by Schnackenberg that is uh, quite reasonable. That tells you what is the um, the uh, net average entropy production of a system which undergoes jumps from in a steady state, undergoes jumps uh, for the, between different states. And the formula goes like that, to say T times the uh, entropy, entropy production is equal to sum over all state divided by two to avoid double counting. And then you have one factor, which is the net current between the state X prime and state X. And 
multiplied by the log of the ratio of the two uh, jump rates. Now, can we interpret this in this way? In the, uh, the best way is just to remember that if you are looking at a system that satisfies detail ordinary detail balance, then this ratio is essentially exponential or minus the energy difference divided by kT. And you take the log of what you get is that the energy difference the energy difference uh, divided the net energy difference divided by kT of uh, between uh, the um, between the ends uh, uh, the uh, and between the state in which you start and the state in which you end up, and so this is this is an amount in a sense of the amount of, en of uh, um, energy that must be supplied to the system in order to make the jump. And this is just the net current of going from one state to the other. So the, that tells you how much, uh, how much entropy must be released, how, how much heat uh, must be released to the um, reservoir in order to keep the system in this steady state. So this illustrates this uh, Schnakenberg relation, which is uh, very useful whenever you have to uh, look at the uh, in thermodynamical interpretation of system which are in undergoing, um, which are described as Markov processes and are in a steady state. So if you just use this, uh, if you just use this uh, relation, we can evaluate what is the total entropy production if we just forget about the detail mechanism of the jumps. So what we have is that we have a first term that correspond to the entropy production in, um, in due to the thermal interactions. And then we have a second term, which is the entropy production related to the interaction with the tape. And they have all the same form. And then if you put plug in the values, that what you get is that the total entropy production that is must be non-negative, of course, is given by the work performed on the system plus KT, which is due to the interaction, times this expression that you see is a, is a slightly different of what we had before. And in particular, this is an expression that diverges when R goes to zero. It means that in a, you have, if you start with the tape, which is practically clean, then we're going to have uh, entropy production, which is very large. So to make a long sto so story short, we have a three different expressions for the entropy production rate. So, and then we can relate them in this way. So the difference between this expression and the one we obtained by considering the system as a tape is can be interpreted as uh, apart from kt and uh, kb and gamma a quantity that is called the uh, kullback library divergence between the steady state probability of the system and the state of the incoming incoming tape, or if you like, the probability distribution of the device with which the system interacts. I don't know if you have seen the um, kullback liber kullback liber divergence. Is, is it known or not known? Mm -hmm. Because in, in, if that is the case, I think I can just remind you what is the kullback liber divergence. Is that OK? So it uh, seems that uh, many people are not really uh, aware of this. Maybe if you could simply okay. explain Yeah. OK. Uh, oh. All right. Yes. OK. So. We have two different distributions, say, uh, does it work? Oh, 
No, it's this thing that is not one. Right with a different pen. Nothing. Nothing comes out. Why not? <laughs> oh. Okay. Now, we have two different distribution. Mm -hmm. P of X and Q of X of the same system. And now we want to have a measure of the in, diff, in some sense of how distance are these two, uh, these two distributions. And this is done by introducing this kullback liber divergence, DKL, and that is written in this way. And this given by the sum over all states of the system of the probability P X times the log of P X divided by Q of X. Now, notice, the first thing to notice is that this is not a real distance because it is not symmetric between P and Q. So um, we, you, don't, you cannot interpret that directly. This is why it's called the, the divergence rather than distance, than a distance. The other thing that you show, and you can show easily, is that this quantity is larger than or equal to zero. And it has a number of very interesting properties. For instance, one of the, well, one of the things that you can uh, do is, uh, we have introduced before the uh, um, mutual information between two random variables, say X and Y. And this can be expressed in terms of these DKL. It's a DKL of the joint probability distribution of X and Y and the product of the marginal distributions. And out of these expressions, we understand two things that are useful to know about the mutual information. First of all, that is always positive or, or zero. And the other one is that it is a quantity that is symmetric with respect to the two variables. That is not obvious a priori. So that in a sense that the amount of information you have of a system by looking at, uh, at a different correlated system is the equal to the amount of information you have of the second given the, 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 um, given the first one. So, okay, so this is the Kullback lab information and the mutual information that we have used before. Go back. <clears throat> okay, so what we say is that it, it, you can show that the difference of the pro uh, entropy production in the generalized detailed balance setup and in the minus the entropy production in the tape setup is given by a proportion to the kullback liber divergence between the two distributions and therefore is larger than or equal to zero. And the other thing is that the difference between the total entropy production in the uh, manipulation and feedback setup minus the tape setup is given by, again, the same factor times the difference between the entropy of the measuring system and the entropy of the system in the steady state. And you can also see that this is a positive quantity. Now, the thing is that there is a positive quantity because in fact, we are forgetting about the number of information handling costs that are say high hidden under the carpet. In particular, we just said in the, in the tape, in the tape case, we are, the idea is that we are fed 
with a taper which has a given, say, a given distribution of zeros and ones, which is differs from the uh, complete randomness. And of course, in order to produce this tape, you have to you have to do some work. No, you can probably start with a tape which is random, and then put it in, letting it go through an eraser in such a way that it all the states are on average, I say most probably put it to say zero or one. So uh, this is a, a amount of work with, that is in some sense stored into the tape that we are only recovering by letting the tape go through our device. So uh, this is a point in which I say the, in the computation degree of freedom, so I have to be taken into account in the entropy balance. And in fact, there is uh, some link between computational and thermodynamic reversibility, but it's, uh, this is not a real equivalence. The only thing, because you can have, for instance, perform computationally irreversible um, uh, transformations in a thermodynamically reversible way, but uh, you have to spend a certain amount of work. So it's so you have to interchange a certain amount of work into heat or release it to the um, reservoir. So, and in fact, I did what I didn't discuss here is that all the things have been uh, considered independently of what. So let's put it this way that the uh, rate in which the uh, handling takes place is uh, essentially irrelevant. But there is dissipation when you want, in fact, you have dissipation if you want to uh, change, if you want to perform your manipulation, information manipulation at a finite speed. You, in, if you go back to the case of the, um, Amanda Yershinsky uh, machine, we have this gamma. So gamma, what we have seen is, uh, what we have discussed is the case in which gamma is very small, so that you, in fact, you wait a long time between any, uh, any interaction and the system so settles essentially to the uh, equilibrium distribution. But in, uh, um, but if you, increase, uh, uh, if you increase gamma, you find that the uh, dissipation that you have in uh, order, for instance, to extract work, so there is a certain amount of entropy product, intrinsic entropy production that is related to your information manipulation increases. So in fact, that there is a, some sort of speed dissipation trade-off that we are going to see a, in a more detailed way tomorrow. So now the next uh, subject that I'm going to discuss is the information handling in biological systems. And um, so I think uh, this is a good point to stop for the five minutes. Excuse me, uh, Lucas, I have a question. I mean, maybe, uh, maybe. Um, can you go to the previous slide, just? Um, this one? Yeah. So here, I mean, I don't know, I mean, perfect or not, but that you have written this that the expression diverges as for R tending to zero. But yeah. I mean, I this expression, if I use like R log one minus R, I can write it uh, one, log one minus R minus of log R. So this essentially, it will be R log one minus R minus R log R and X log X or R log R tending to zero is zero. So one, sorry, what you get is one yeah. of, huh? it zero. goes to, to minus R log R. Okay, mm -hmm. probably. It's not okay. Yeah, probably, uh, okay, uh, at the moment, uh, maybe I just made a, made a mistake. There, there, there was a constant term somewhere that I forgot. I, I, I checked that in the, in the five minutes mm -hmm. and I'll tell you back, okay? Thank you for the observation. Thank you. So we can resume after five minutes.
Okay. So we can start whenever you're ready, Professor. Okay. Okay, then other words. Okay, so the first thing is uh, just the observation. I was uh, mistaken in, in writing the formula. Now you can see it. So the, the factor R in front of the log was not there. 
Uh, so when r goes to uh, when r goes to zero, this quantity actually diverges. Is that okay? So you can I, I just uh, wrote it wrongly. Thank you. Okay. So thank you for the observation. Now I let's go to the next lecture. <clears throat> All right, so this open, actually my interest in this uh, in stochastic thermodynamics race because I, I was interested in the, the way in which information processing in the cell is constrained by thermodynamical and thermodynamical properties. Now, there is a lot of information processing in the cell and in fact, uh, one of the possible definitions of life is that it is a non-equilibrium chemical system that is uh, uh, driven by information and in which information is the, at the core. If you think about it, the whole, um, you say, reproduction is the way of uh, transferring the template for building an organism from one, uh, say, one set of reaction networks to a set of comparatively informal, uh, in, 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 not informal, but uh, uh, formless uh, amount of uh, chemical reactions and organize them in such a way that you make a copy of the initial, of the initial uh, uh, network. So uh, information is central from this point of view. And, and of course, so there are a number of microscopic information processing in the cell that we can consider. For instance, simple copy. A copy is like, first of all, a replication. We know a replication of DNA in which DNA by uh, this uh, very uh, clever mechanism produces two copies of itself by splitting and then, uh, um, in, and then arranging a complementary chain on one of these two um, parts, or a transcription, a transcription from DNA to RNA. This is essentially copy template, um, template assisted uh, polymerization of chains. The other possibility is translation. You translate a DNA, a, a, say a RNA, sorry, into proteins, and so the sequence has been to be uh, transformed into a different um, different alphabet. The uh, another, say, a more elementary information handling process is a, a transfer RNA amino acylation. Now, the, the fact is that in the encoding of, of the uh, genetic code, so the genetic code is encoded in these uh, transfer RNA molecules that have on the one hand, they carry the activated amino acid that is going to be attached to the growing protein. And on the other hand, it has a region, and a region which is able to be uh, identified, say, to, which is able to attach in, uh, in a stable way, more or less a stable way to the codons of the RNA. So the um, these uh, part carries in a sense of the so the you have it has the, the anticodon, but the fact is that if you have a, a transfer RNA that is not yet carrying it um, its uh, activated amino acid, you have to find some way of identifying the correct amino acid and the, and, the, and pairing the correct amino acid with the correct transfer RNA. And this is done by activation enzymes that are able to recognize one side and not the anticodon, in fact, of the transfer RNA and attach the corresponding um, amino acid. And of course, so we all we have a sensing of all processes in which a, a life form monitors its environment and takes a decision about its behavior. 
In all these uh, processes, it is important that you have a high fidelity. That is, uh, that the, uh, the amount of errors that are made is low enough for the stability of the whole processes. Now, we are not going to discuss this in a, in a very um, general setting because it's a, it's, uh, I think that uh, we don't yet have a very comprehensive theory for that. So we are looking at a certain example in which we can be more definite. And the one very important uh, example and situation is, of course, template assistant polymerization. That the idea is that the, this is correspond to transcription, translation, and uh, replication of, let's say, all these are actually instances of template assisted polymerization. So the idea is that you have a template in the form of uh, a chain which contains, uh, contains some units, and these units can be of different kinds. And you know, in uh, all this discussion, I just consider the, the fact I just consider a case in which the units uh, can be of two different kinds, let's say black and white. And then you have a growing, a growing chain that is uh, attached to this uh, template and uh, to which and over which there is a copy machine. The copy machine takes, uh, takes the units out of a monomer pool and adds them at the end of the growing uh, chain. And this is performed out, in, uh, out of equilibrium, but in a situation that is close to a uh, steady state in the sense that we can imagine that we have an uh, infinitely long template and uh, the machine keeps on letting the um, adding monomers at a finite elongation speed. B. And of course, in, we have that the, um, the uh, choice of the monomers to be attached can be usually will be uh, correct. So the, there will be a right monomer at the right place, but from time to time, some errors will be made. So we consider the case in which we denote by R the right residue for the template that corresponds to the template we are considering, and by W the wrong residue. And of course, okay. This is just to, uh, for the discussion. In general, what you have is that you, you have uh, the growing, uh, growing uh, say, you are looking now at what happens at the, um, at the copy machine. So the copy machine arrives as, a, an, as an input, has the uh, actual reading of the um, of the monomer that uh, correspond or the monomer of the template that corresponds to the one that it's uh, supposed to be added to the growing to the growing machine, and then it goes. So with this input, it goes into uh, a certain amount of uh, reactions, and this reaction can be described by a transition network like this one, and that. that and of course, say what you have is that depending on, say depending on the reading, the reading can be right or wrong. And so, if you are, if it is right, you end up a certain transition network, and at the end you have an outcome that is, uh, say, uh, that corresponds to the fact that adding the right monomer at the growing chain. So here we have the dots they are the growing chain, and dots plus R means that now we have added the right monomer at the end of the growing chain. And of course, this uh, process repeats and you may be, you may have a right, right or wrong, wrong. And the other possibility, of course, is that the reading at the beginning was wrong. So you end up in a different transition networks that attaches a wrong monomer to the growing chain and then goes on say, maybe a, later on you attach a right one and wrong. So this is the setup. Now, <laughs> this process can be done in, uh, in so the, the idea is that now we try to see what, what can be, uh, how to fill in this uh, transition network. One possibility is that there are no intermediate states at all. So this is just a reading 
and then you end up adding either R or, R or W depending. Another possibility is a proofreading. That is that you start, you add, say, you, you go uh, at a, some sort of intermediate, intermediate state. This intermediate state is unstable. And the idea is that if, if you can do the transition in such a way that the intermediate state, unstable intermediate state, is more likely to go back to square one if the monomers that you have decided to, to add is the wrong one, then in this way, you can uh, have a sort of a proofreading of the, uh, of the uh, growth step because with a higher probability, so let's put it this way. If there are no intermediate state, the only way of discriminating between right or wrong um, monomers is by the uh, by the interaction energy of the monomer itself with the template, and so this is bounded by the Boltzmann factor of the difference in energy between a good match and a bad match. Now, this might not be sufficient. If you introduce a proofreading that requires to keep the system out of equilibrium, because you have to push in some way the, um, the system away from uh, the intermediate state in one direction rather than the other. Because, you know, if, if you have, if you have uh, um, um, a reaction with an intermediate high energy state, but you are at equilibrium, then the equilibrium that you get at the end of the day is the same as you would have if you had just a direct interaction. No? Going, the, the intermediate barrier does not uh, change the probability distribution if you are at equilibrium. But if you're out of equilibrium, you can use this intermediate distribution, this intermediate state, to uh, connect, uh, say, to, um, uh, to um, provide you with uh, a better, a better um, result in the uh, elongation of the, um, of the chain. And you can also consider a case in which you have more than one proofreading step, like in this one. And of course, uh, the, each, since each of these uh, cycles uh, say uh, they are cycles in, uh, eventually you can consider them as being cycles in a steady state out of equilibrium. Each of them will cost uh, some dissipation. So, uh, some, uh, we can describe globally the system by introducing, well, the elongation speed, which is quite easy to interpret, the error rate, a, eta, which we want to keep as small as possible. Now, out of these quantities, we have that the rate of right incorporations per unit time is given by the elongation speed times the probability of making the right interpolation, incorporation, so one minus theta. And of course, the complementer gives the right of wrong incorporations. Now, what we have is that, so the, this is the rate of right incorporation, rate of wrong incorporation, then it is quite, say, trivially, we have uh, this, uh, this result that the ratio of error rate to one minus error rate is equal to the ratio of the wrong incorporation, right, uh, wrong incorporation speed and to the right incorporation speed. That's quite true. Now, how do we uh, control the, um, the incorporation speed? And here uh, we make a very simple approach. That is that we consider the system, um, say, is described by, um, uh, how to say, um, we start from, we start from the, let's put, say the monomer, the free monomer, and then the incorporated monomer. So this is a state of the free monomer, and this is a state of the incorporated monomer. And of course, what we have is that the, uh, that the incorporated monomer must be stable. So the 
energy of the incorporated monomer must be lower than the energy of the free monomer. But then during incorporation, we can have two things. One of the, well, first of all, the, ent the en uh, energy of the wrong monomer, incorporated wrong monomer with respect to the incorporated right monomer is higher because they do not match, do not match pretty well. No, you do not, does not match with the template. The other, the other thing is that in order to arrive at the end of the, uh, or the, end of the process, the system has to uh, say, the, 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 you may interpret this uh, x-axis uh, x as being some sort of reaction coordinate for this reaction. And so in the intermediate state, you go through a state which has a higher energy and then goes down to the final state. And there is a, dif the, there is a difference in the uh, height of the barrier between the between the wrong and the right uh, the wrong and the right monomer and the idea is that if this barrier is higher for the wrong monomer than for the right one you can discriminate between wrong and one uh, right one provided that you are out of equilibrium because of the thing that i mentioned before so with this model you can write down the um uh, rate rate constant for the processing going from uh, say free to incorporated monomer they these rate constants will be proportional to some basic rate only again that i don't want to i i don't know and then uh, uh, given in this way so you have a driving take into account that you have a driving force um driving force for the uh, for the growth of the uh, of the chain this driving force is given by a difference in um, chemical potential of the bound monomer with respect to the um, unbound monomer so the, and the, and that is this uh, difference here you know you see from the unbound to bound unbound to bound and we assume that for say in, in principle this difference uh, this uh, chemical potential can be the same as far as we are concerned and then uh, so once we introduce uh, this chemical potential for binding and chemical and the barrier height and then the, we have uh, the energies of the state and then we have the, the rate of the for the incorporation of the right monomer is proportional to the exponential of the difference so the difference between the unbound and bound energy times the um, chemical chemical potential for the, the incorporation of one monomer and then there is uh, this uh, barrier I, I forgot a minus sign and all these things there is a minus sign. There is a minus sign here. Okay. Anyway, I, this is a really mess. I should have. Anyway, so but the idea is that you have. Let's put it. So you have this that drives the incorporation. So the larger, the larger mu, the, the larger the incorporation. So and so this is positive. The difference in energy. You have to measure the difference in energy between the. Um, amount uh, say the free monomer and the uh, and the bound monomer and so it increases uh, when the uh, difference in energy increases on the other hand if the barrier is gets higher the rate should go down so there is a minus sign here there is a minus sign here <sighs> Let's try and do the thermodynamic balance for this process. Say we define so the total entropy produced per incorporated monomer is called delta S dot, and we uh, condition if we condition it for the monomer to be in, uh, wrong, then we deny we um, denote it by delta S dot W. 
what is the work done by incorporation of, of the moment? Well, essentially the work, the, the source of energy is the chemical potential. So the, uh, what you have is that the, uh, this will be given by the chemical potential times the number of incorporation, total number of incorporations, uh, successful incorporation that we're going to have. And this is given by the rate, so the current from incorporated to, uh, so to, from free to incorporated monomer divided by the elongation speed. Oh, this is just counting, counting the, the number for one incorporation. What is the difference in free energy between the initial and the final state? Well, we say that at the, at the end of the day, what we get is, uh, is a monomer which lays uh, specifically in its in a state, maybe right or wrong, but it is at equilibrium at a given temperature. So the, the, what you have is that the difference of the partition function of a free monomer with respect to the bound monomer, which is given by some sort of something of this kind. And you have to uh, take into account the fact that, that you have, um, you have uh, monomers of a different kind. So you have to sum over all different kinds of the monomers. It depends on whether it is right or wrong. What is the error rate? Now, one of the possibilities that assume that the uh, in this elongation happens very, very close to equilibrium. In this case, what we can evaluate what is the error rate by just looking at uh, what is the net free energy cost of uh, incorporating a wrong monomer at equilibrium. And this is given by the difference of the energy for incorporating the wrong monomer with, with minus sign. So it's a difference of the, say, minus, the difference of the energy minus of the change in the free energy. So it becomes exponential minus the difference in energy plus the de a change in the free energy that is given up here, divided by KT. And of course, if the uh, difference between the, the the energy of the wrong, incorpor wrong uh, incorporation increases, then uh, this uh, error rate goes down. And in fact, uh, and let also in introduce the, so given this, uh, this uh, basic error rate, which you would get for an equilibrium incorporation of the uh, of the chain uh, of the chain, we can evaluate how far we are from uh, from this equilibrium incorporation, and this is given again by a kullback liver divergence that is uh, written here for the simple for this simple case. We can specialize the uh, work for the case in which the incorporated monomer is wrong. And what we get is essentially the same, say it's, it's the term that corresponds to the wrong incorporated polymer that we see here. Now, given this setup, what are the results? The results is that if you look at the steady state, you find that the uh, total entropy produced per one incorporation is given by. Can I ask one question? Yes, yes, please. Previous slide, uh, the GI J is a number, correct? Sorry? In the previous slide, you have a GI J in the direction of the delta W. This, this one, J, J, J. Ah, that is a number, correct? The, no, this is a number current per unit time. In order to in order to have it a per incorporation, you have to divide it by V. All right. Okay. So now we're looking at what is the total entropy production 
in general, so uh, total entropy production for one incorporation, this is given by the work done, uh, average work done for per one incorporation minus the change in the uh, equilibrium free energy, of course. And then there is this contribution. This contribution is negative because of the, the um, <clears throat> Kullback library divergence is always positive. And the Kullback library, so what is the origin of this term? The origin of this term is the fact that uh, is the a loss of entropy of the growing chain with respect to what it would have if it were at equilibrium. So if, you, if it were at equilibrium, there will be a certain amount of incorporation errors. If you want to have a, a chain which has a lower amount of incorporation errors, then so the, you have this, uh, so you have that the kullback uh, liver divergence is positive, and then you have to say you have a reduction in entropy of the chain. This is a reduction in entropy of the chain with respect to the equilibrium chain. And this must be taken into account in the, in the total balance. And you see, since this is a negative term, that means that it, it, it in, increases the total entropy production. No, the, it, it means that you have to Delta W minus Delta F, the work that you have to spend will be larger when you want to reduce the number of errors in the corporation. In particular, if we look at, at the entropy production per incorporated wrong monomer, what we have is essentially the same, uh, the same contribution, but here we have only the contribution to the uh, kullback liver divergence of the wrong monomer itself that is given by the ratio. So the log of the ratio of the um, error um, with respect to the um, error rate with respect to the equilibrium error rate. Uh, I guess, yeah. And then you, we can use this equation to solve for the so you, we can use these equations and, and uh, solve for the error rate. So the error rate is given by the equilibrium error rate times this exponential factor. And this exponential factor, what you see, uh, say, uh, apart from the work and the, uh, so this is just uh, the uh, change in the equilibrium free energy per, per one incorporation. But the, the interesting point is that uh, in order to reduce eta, you have to uh, increase uh, the, uh, say, you have to increase uh, the total entropy production per incorporated monomer. You see this term here. If we want to get this thing down, we have to increase this term. Up. Now, let's see, uh, we, can, we can interpret this in, the, in different cases. And that is in analogy with what we have done with the um, mandal yarshinsky machine. There are possible copy regimes. No? One, one regime is the one in which you have that this quantity, say the uh, work done my, in, no, let's, okay, let's go, if the, the, one, the one which we would like to work is the one in which the, uh, the error rate is less than the equilibrium error rate. Now, in this case, just by, by this uh, condition, we have that this quantity must be larger than the, say, this has called, so this might be positive. And therefore, the uh, and we get what you get is that the error, no error rate must be larger than the equilibrium error rate times this exponential factor. And so, what you see is the effect of increasing the total entropy production per incorporated monomer helps to uh, reduce the error rate. So, this is the usual situation in which we would like to work. 
But there are two other interesting regimes. The other regime is a daemon. What is a daemon? A daemon is the one in which this uh, difference between the work per uh, incorporated wrong monomer and the free energy is less than zero. So we are extracting some work. And in this case, uh, and on the other hand, the eta is less than eta. So we have, we have still a, a certain amount of, um, we have a certain amount of, uh, how to say, gain, but we are able to extract a certain amount of, uh, of work out of this uh, condition. Nevertheless, uh, this, uh, there is no contradiction because if you look at the total uh, uh, production of entropy, then this is also, there is uh, some contribution also by the right ones, by the right matches. And they, in order to make the right matches anyway, you are spending some free energy because uh, there is a mu, no? There is a mu that um, uh, chemical potential is. And the third regime is the one in which you have an error rate, which is larger than the equilibrium error rate, but you don't get any, any work out of that. Let's look a little bit better on how, to the, uh, how the different uh, regimes work. So we can imagine in principle two different ways of distinguishing between right and wrong monomer. One is, energetic discrimination that is the fact that that is the uh, that interaction of the of the uh, monomers with the growing chain with the template uh, have a different values uh, and they say that you have this uh, let's call it the, this is the difference the delta e is the difference between the energy of the wrong monomer and the energy of the right monomer so in the and then the other possibility is that in, uh, in delta, I remind you, is the difference in height of the energy barrier between the right and the wrong monomer, between the wrong and the right monomer. So if this an, a difference in energy is larger than the, um, than the difference in the height barrier, then we call this an energetic discrimination. We see that this is one regime and then the other possibility is that this is less, that the difference in energy is less than the difference in height barrier, and you have a kinetic discrimination. Now, it is quite simple to realize that if we are in the energetic discrimination, then the error rate cannot be smaller than the equilibrium error rate. And in, it turns out that it is quite easy, but I cannot show it at the moment, that eta is a monotonically decreases as the incorporation speed decreases in the sense that you reach the minimum when you arrive at zero dissipation, you are as close as equilib to equilibrium as you can. Because in, and in that case, say in, we can say that the in copying of the chain is, uh, 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 happens reversibly from the thermodynamical point of view. On the other hand, in kinetic discrimination, you can have, you can have that uh, the error rate is smaller than the equilibrium error rate, but it cannot be uh, smaller than a certain, than this quantity that is the Boltzmann factor of the difference in the uh, of the Boltzmann factor and the difference of energy of the barriers, but in this case, what you have is that uh, in the the error rate decreases as the velocity, incorporation velocity increases, and in, say it eventually reaches this uh, this bound. So what you what you have here is uh, well, notation is slightly different, but we have the error rate. And this is a, as a function of dissipation. So if, when the dissipation is very small, we are close to equilibrium. And what, so we, we, have, we are at the uh, equilibrium error rate. And now we increase, uh, we increase. And here we have on the right-hand side, we have uh, a, um, 
system in which the only energy dissipation, only energetic uh, discrimination takes place. And therefore, as we increase the dissipation, the error rate increases, and eventually we reach, um, well, it, this is just around complete, complete randomness. On the other hand, if we have um, a kinetic discrimination, then so at the beginning we have always uh, say the, the error rate is close to equilibrium, but then it starts decreasing and eventually reaches that bound that we said before. And this is for a different value of this uh, uh, difference in the, in the error barrier height. Um, well, I'm afraid that, that I won't, won't be able to go to the end of proofreading, but well, just basically what happens is that we have, we have a, um, uh, the, the idea is that to make a, an attempt at incorporating, but only decide if uh, after a while. So what you have is that you start to take, take the, um, take the monomer, then arrive to some sort of unstable state here, and then you have a fast way of going back if the monomer is the wrong one, and then uh, and uh, slower, uh, slower correction if your monomer is the right one. So here we have the rates of the, of the reaction for the right monomer, and these are the reactions for the wrong monomer. And, and you end up here on, this, on, a, on a metastable state that eventually leads to incorporation. And so, well, you have a kind of regimes and you can, uh, you can see that as a function of the uh, error rate, you can have uh, one regime that corresponds to error correction, then you have a, a an intermediate regime in which the error is larger than the equilibrium error, and this this is a structure that is able, in some sense, to work as a Maxwell demo by reducing the errors by reducing the the, the energy of the tape, and if eventually you have error in the dud regime, the error amplification. But this is okay. So I'm afraid that, that I have to stop here. So any, any questions? Thank you. That's been a very intense session. So uh, okay, that's one question. Okay, this one. Hello. Uh, no, yeah. So uh, you showed this uh, error correction. Uh, so, uh, so uh, you can go to that slide. So uh, there was three regimes. Uh, yeah. So basically, uh, this uh, error is greater than this uh, uh, eta equal uh, eq. Uh, so. No, uh, okay. before this, before this. Well, it's before this, okay. Uh, uh, yes, this one. Okay. So, uh, means, uh, how did, did uh, this eta is greater than this eta eq? So, basically, uh, eta is less than eta eq, and uh, this uh, exponential term is also uh, greater than the zero. So, uh, here, uh, this eta should be less than eta q, so um, it should be less than I was thinking. So, yeah. oh, oh yeah. no, yeah. This, is, no yeah, this is larger than zero. So, the, but it, the, the point is that what happens to this guy? Yeah, it is greater than zero. If, if, this, if this exponent is larger than zero, then the error rate is larger than Ef, right? And you can have this with a positive, with a positive word network, provided that it is larger than the uh, entropy production per wrong incorporated monomer. 
In fact, I say I should put here that this, this quantity must be larger than delta s dot w here instead of zero. You have a delta s must be larger than delta s dot w. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So there should be a correction. So, uh, uh, so the, then uh, this eta has some boundaries basically. So yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So this is say usually you are consider you are interested in having eta say smaller than our equilibrium because uh, say if it is at equilibrium then you can then the uh, uh, copy can take place uh, say reversibly without dissipation but this is not life the whole idea of life is that you reduce the errors and then in such a way that you have a, a reproducible you can reproduce your machines you know Thank you. Uh, yeah. There was a last topic I saw was on stochastic polymerization. So, could you discuss that tomorrow, if possible? Model of what? Are they? The last two slides. Oh, the last two slides. Oh, well. No, this is a say, uh, this is one about <laughs> proof, all about proof reading. Oh, this one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So this is, uh, and then uh, this, this is, uh, yeah, okay. But this is basically just uh, making uh, making a summary. Ah, okay, I got it. Thanks so much. It's too much. <laughs> Okay, if there are uh, no more questions, uh, let's thank Professor Felici for his uh, lecture. All right. So we'll join uh, Professor Felici tomorrow again for his uh, final session. All right. So thank see you. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Don't leave. Yes. Yeah.